So welcome, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, you, um, we're here talking with Ulf, uh, Mr. Ulf Debo from the nation of Ephraim. I'm here with my friend uh, Patrick, Mr. Patrick here at the embassy in the Golan and our good friend, Mr. Hannes. Um, uh, there's been unfortunate news of a theft in uh, Germany of the Temple Coin Institute, and we'd like to address this issue and see uh, what it means politically, what it means for the Jewish people, what it means for the, the Geula, the Mashiach process, and uh, what can we do uh, to help? So first of all, um, Mr. Hannes, please tell us, you know, in short, in your words, um, what happened, technically speaking, uh, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, as um, some people already heard, yes, we, we had a burglary here in Cologne, at our uh, head of state from our NGO. Our NGO uh, was shifted to Cologne because our last uh, location in Hasewinkel was already destroyed by the city of Hasewinkel and some other guys. So, so also the gold and silver was moved to Cologne where it was on 24th of August now uh, stolen in a, in a, theft so of course it's a it's a pity it's a real pity but 10 days later right now it it has some good opportunities for us also i, I think okay, thank you very much and Ulf, as the leader of the nation of ephraim you've been teaching torah to your community of thousands of people throughout europe and uh and uh, in light of your recent um, connections and alliances with the Jewish people here in Israel, um, how do you think about what happened, and uh, what do you what do you think about uh, the opportunities, or uh, how this can be resolved? Where this should, how how we should look at this uh, situation? Um, well, the first thing, of course, what I, um, you know, when I heard this um, was the suspicion that it's a really, you know, like uh, it was a planned issue. So nobody pulls out uh, 270, 80 kilos. It's a, a whole safe. I mean, it's a quarter of a ton out of the window. You cannot do this alone. So it was not a, a random, you know, by chance theft, it was a planned attack. And after now, um, you know, I started here my work with the, you know, to regather the nation of Ephraim. It was started in 2005 in, um, in Israel, here with uh, Rabbi Feld in the background. He was uh, present there. And 2015, you know, I started the Chuva process after I've been uh, out of Israel for seven years. And since then, basically encounter um, all kinds of uh, groups and um, yeah, what well, parties and so on and so on, who are extremely anti-Semitic, extremely anti-Semitic. So in the moment, in the very moment, you pull out, hey, you know, I'm coming from Jerusalem, I have to check something. So immediately there is an um, an absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, violent reaction sometimes, even violent reaction, you know, verbally and so on and so on. So, so this is why I started this, you know, to restarted this 2015 to regather all the guys I had in, uh, was in contact before. And um, so the first real huge, huge issue happened exactly to the day five years ago in Hasewinkel. And from this moment on, we saw that the newspapers, the newspapers, so they reported on a, a theological issue we uh, put in a private setting, and they reported on this. And after that, you know, an, an, an extremely anti-Semitic and very bad, bad way, you know, after, you know, me being now three years, three and a half years, um, walking around, um, gathering the guys, talk about Torah, Geula, and so on. 
And so 2018, you wanted to know, okay, who would be actually really responsible for a theological, uh, for the theological issue between the Trinity, the status of Jerusalem, and so on. So who do we have to talk to? And so we set up um, like a very public, you know, very public, like a court, like a court, and uh, put like 100 people up. You know, including the Pope, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, um, of course, our friends from the International Christian Embassy um, and various German politicians and uh, heads of states to find out, okay, who in the world would be responsible to come to a peaceful solution concerning Mount Zion and the status of Jerusalem with the Roman Catholic Church? That, that was okay, the well, One second, I wanted to... I want to ask and Mr. Hannes a follow-up question, if it's okay. Yeah. Um, regarding really what to, is the... You know, I really want to finish this point and stress this okay, out, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Joseph. Uh, because our intention was from the very beginning, you know, peace, peace in Jerusalem, and according to our law. And what happened in 2018, that they said no, um, you do not belong, you do not accept the state, and so on and so on. And there was a series of 18, 19, 20 articles appearing on Mars and telling basically ridiculous lies. And every time one of these articles appeared, we had a physical attack on our building. I mean, we're talking destroyed, um, destroyed cars, uh, dist you know, they burned our Israel flag. Um, they raided us. I mean, it's uh, stuff was stolen. It's it's incredible. So, and every time we went to the police and wanted to get help, they said, "No, we don't get this." So now, when so, I heard so, okay, this, okay, I understand. Now, so you uh, haven't seen justice yet from no, all the times all. that you guys have had attacks. Absolutely. So this was now after five years. You know, going through I don't know how much. This was like the tip of the iceberg. The tip mm -hmm. of the iceberg. It is impossible. Well, Mr. Hannes, follow-up question for what you said earlier. What is the purpose of the temple coin in the religious community um, uh, context of the nation of Ephraim? And why was it so important for you guys to make an alliance with the Jewish people in Israel? Oh, yeah, as a... So we started uh, to uh, the, the we started the project of the FM National Gold and Silver Trust already uh, four years ago, uh, or Ulf started it, it even earlier before. But uh, in, we in in the last uh, four years we manifest uh, the temple silver temple coin in in the physical world, and uh, of course it was uh, because of several reasons. First. Uh, we know the, the debt money is going down right now worldwide. So we say gold and silver is a physical money of, of Hashem. And of course, uh, te silver temple coin is uh, Mahatit Shekel from, from, Moshe, from Moshe. So we are originally going to through the Torah, to, uh, to the Torah. It's connected there. As every every Israeli has to pay some silver in, in several cases and so on. And, and, and that's the reason why we started to produce it, that every uh, Israeli can fulfill the commandments from Moshe. So, of course, it was a big step for us uh, to, to bring it uh, in the physical world. And we were very happy for makes a connection to you guys in Israel, to the Jewish side, and that we can send it to you. And it was of good. It was of course a very big historic step for us, and I'm still very happy about it. Yes. Thank you very very much, Anas. Um, Patrick, can you please? You wrote the anti-Semitism report, correct? And uh, you have been documenting uh, this issue of anti-Semitism. Can you talk about? the difference between this specific uh, attack and uh, in comparison to the other ones, and maybe tell us a little bit about the uh, the anti-Semitism that you guys as B'nai Noah, as Noahites, or as uh, Lost Tribes of Israel um, community 
have suffered? Yeah, um, so when you remember 2016, uh, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance uh, published a new definition. So and uh, there is written that anti-Semitism can be against Jews and non-Jews. So we are, um, yeah, we are, because of our Torah study, we find out that we are also Semites. So and that we are affected from this uh, definition on anti-Semites too. And um, every action against us is actually an anti-Semitic attack like you experienced uh, over the last thousands of years. Yeah, so if we are also infected uh, with that, uh, affected. Uh, and uh, we wrote perhaps... an anti-Semitism report yes, about the, again? Could you perhaps read the definition? Do you have the definition yeah. there? I think because, you know, a lot of people, the um, uh, the anti-Semitism definition of the I, uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance was issued on the 26th, 26th of May 2016. So one yes. year after I started my Chuva process, you know, um, went back in contact with Rabbi Feld and they said, okay, you know, I want to clear up some stuff. So one year later, this definition comes out. Yeah, anti-Semitism is a particular perception of Jews that can be expressed in hatred toward Jews. Anti-Semitism is directed in word or deed against Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property and against Jewish communal or religious institutions. So when you see the, the robbery we had uh, on the 24th of August, yeah, um, it's completely... Uh, non non Jewish property, but I, I also I would like to also um, speak um, official you know officially about um, the first time I received temple coins from the nation of Ephraim. Um, Ulf uh, directed Patrick and Alex to uh, give us a box of uh, temple coins. I believe from the uh, Tikkun packages and other. Um, offers that templecoin.org offers to the people and uh, we were very very happy to receive this this uh, gift um and to um commit to use this money to or these this silver in some way to further the process of the geula and this is something that uh, i particularly have been working on at mnglobal.org and we were very very happy to cooperate and make this alliance with the nation of Ephraim, being that we realized very, very quickly from uh, our eight-hour discussion with uh, Mr. Ulf and later hours and hours with all the guys, that uh, we're both on the, we're both fighting the same fight, um, looking for justice, looking for uh, for good, for 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 honesty in the systems that is apparently uh, uh, don't exist any, anymore in the world. Because of the um, because of the lack of the light of the Torah, and uh, of course, ever since then, uh, we've been working together on different projects, whether it's the Torah Club or whether it's uh, the Sanhedrin Initiative, and so on. And uh, we're very very happy about this alliance, and that's why I think that also, um, I me mean, personally, I believe that this attack on the nation of Ephraim, uh, besides the fact that it is. A very high amount of value and uh it's also very significant because this is the first time that uh this uh, these attacks are interfering with the israeli and jewish communities internationally which are trying to pursue the geula process with the assistance of the temple coin that means till now the temple coin wasn't directed to the Jewish people, to Israel, whether uh, to help the poor on uh, uh, with the Machatit Shekel and other issues. But right now, we're talking about religious significance, international significance, and we're talking about the Jewish people um, part of this exchange. So I believe that this is uh, extremely important. And of course, uh, I would say that uh, to all those who are listening, if you have friends, political friends, rabbis, people that uh, can have an influence on the uh, German government or to help them, um, of course, uh, to push and to remind them that this is a very, very important thing, that uh, almost a quarter million, uh, over a quarter million, almost a half a million 
in uh, uh, euros in gold and silver value um, is not, of course, uh, you know, nothing to be. Uh, it's not a small amount of money, and it, and of course, the nation of Ephraim has many trustees. Of course, um, Mr. Hans, I, I understand that um, you guys have this covered as far as the uh, the, the trustees being insured as far as Temple Coin is concerned. But of course, um, as far as, uh, of course, this makes uh, life harder for Temple Coin, I would assume. And of course, if the robbery will be returned, it's uh, definitely uh, preferable. Um, uh, Hannes, uh, last follow-up question. What can you tell us about the practical police reports and things that are going on? Um, in relation to uh, this investigation and whatever's going on right now? Oh, uh, first, I, I want to make the point uh, clear again that uh, maybe lack of security also, which had, which was, was taking place here, uh, of course, there was a little lack of security, but uh, it, it is important to understand for, for the viewers that that there was an ongoing, overwhelming situation since years, as as Ulf said already, the attacks over years on our community made the whole work uh, the whole work very hard. We, so with with press pressure and and that since years we we were not coming behind all our work because the attacks were ongoing. So we we. At at every point of time, we we were not able to to make our work in the in the in the way it should be done because the attacks was were ongoing. So this is very important to understand first. So uh, when it comes now to the police investigation, okay, um, the police uh, do their normal job. Yesterday I was in the police station. In a, in a normal robbery, which which takes place at the at the time very often, I hear it even from friends, stealing there, robbery there, it's it's everywhere like now, so because society is breaking down in a way. So this so in a normal situation, uh, it it the investigation would end up very soon in in a paper trash, I guess. In, in this case, uh, we can hope that it develop a little bit further, uh, different because of our international alliance. So, so it's so the point what, which I want to make is maybe Ulf will tell also about it. We were under investigation of of the state security since some years because we we made the charge of anti-Semitism. Uh, like Patrick read it, we charged uh, attacks for anti-Semitism, and because the the authorities didn't understand that, we come on the on the list of of uh, strange communities. Let's say, yeah. So blacklist of the state, enemies of the state. Like okay, enemies of the state, because the authorities were not able to understand what we are actually doing uh, and how it's related to the Bible. So they they were not understanding it. So this investigation now, uh, yesterday I was in the police station, is now connected. They, the police connected the same uh, state security office. This is the highest police of the state, which is already connected in the investigation. And I, and I think this, this gives us a great opportunity for clearing up the facts for the authority that we were wrong on that list from the first day on. Yeah, that's the point. Instead of being a uh, enemy of the state, we should get the whole protection of the state for what we are doing, even by law. So I hope that we can clarify this up with the help of you Jews also, because um, we need actually the help of some Orthodox rabbis to explain maybe this to the authorities, and I guess this it's a big opportunity to to clear that uh, general effects behind up. Hundred um, percent. Ulf, would you like to give a? Would you like to add something? 
No, so go to Ulf. And so Ulf, would you like to uh, give us your uh, closing statements? And uh, I guess we'll wrap this up so it shouldn't be too long for the viewers. Yes. Um, um, well, I started to uh, to write uh, a letter to the Minister of Interior, uh, Mr. Herbert Reul. All right. So he is responsible for that report. And um, I absolutely agree with... Um, with Hannes, of course. So before we met, and while I was still in Germany, I'm now not in Germany for over three and a half years. Okay. So um, because, you know, of my uh, connection to the Rabat and old friends and so on, of course, I visited, you know, the Rabat rabbi uh, in Düsseldorf, my hometown. This is where I was born. Chaim Bakan. Now, um, so basically... One or two years after we were basically um, had the incident in Hasewinkel, so um, our, the Minister of Interior went to visit Chaim Bakan for Rosh Hashanah, for Rosh Hashanah, I think 5781, I think two years ago or something like this, you know. And um, so this is where we thought, okay, now here we have now the direct connection, all right, that we did basically the same thing. We celebrate Shabbat, we celebrate Rosh Hashanah, we uh, do Yom Kippur, and of course now the upcoming Feast of Tabernacles. Now, because we are not Jewish, because we are not Jewish, now this is why, you know, uh, Bnei Noach or, um, you know, Lost Tribes of Israel, let's call it where we, we are not Jewish. But as you know for yourself now, um, I mean, I try to, teach my guys Torah and this now since 1999 so it's not since yesterday it's for 25 years I'm doing this now and uh, so this was this is a misunderstanding what Hannes were talking about because we are not Jewish we were judged you know inside of the Christian community like Herbert Royal who is a Roman Catholic and for Roman Catholic we are apostates because we do not believe in the Trinity, like the ICEJ, for example, okay? So we were smeared by this Trinitarians for all the time. And every time when we wanted to come up and say, yes, but listen, you know, we, we are like the, you know, the Jews, we keep the Torah, it's an inner Israeli conflict, would you please uh, stop? He said, yeah, but we can do this to you because you're not Jewish. Anti-Semitism is only against Jews. And I said, yeah, but this is not oh, what the so, definition uh, You're saying that because during the Holocaust, the Jewish people after the Holocaust received special rights and privileges in Germany and throughout Europe in order to prevent the horrors that happened. But um, somewhere in the, in the story, um, this phenomenon of the lost tribes of Israel or the B'nai Noach community, the ultra-Orthodox Noahide community, wasn't exactly addressed and hopefully uh if i understand correctly hopefully with with the with the publicity and the resolution of this um situation today uh you're hoping that um these issues will be addressed as well and uh added uh, amended into the anti-semitism as um mr patrick just explained the definitions and so on so if i understand correctly you're hoping that the that the definitions of anti-Semitism should be updated um, into practical German law and uh, B'nai Noach, oh, especially it, it involved is. in it Jewish is. projects, this, this should have point. protection. This is the whole point. So the non-Jews are included in the definition according to anti-Semitism. Now, when I keep the Torah like a Jew, when I hang out and say, hey, my kids are coming from Jerusalem, you know, and so on. I have friends on the, and so on. So it doesn't matter. Now everybody thinks I'm a Jew. And this is why we are attacked. This is why we're attacked. So this is where the anti-Semitism comes in. And against that, there are laws. So, and this is why we went to the police. We went to the state security and said, so listen, guys, we are, you know, we are community, we live according to the Torah, and we experience anti-Semitism against non-Jews, exactly as the definition said. And now it was a political decision by 
the Socialist Party, here the SPD, that they said, no, these are, you know, we, we, uh, we have a different understanding and you do not belong to that group. And so our accusation we said, hey, listen, we need help from the state was used against us, was used against us. And this is what we hope now to clear up because it's uh, very clear that for eight years, first alone, then after two years, you know, we started, uh, we, we received a building. And now for eight years, there are thousands of people who made a sign up where they want to see a solution to the biblical questions, to the biblical question. So now it is a matter of religious freedom to do that. Okay. 100%. So, also, so I, I hope I really I think, believe that this time the uh, the investigation will be focused first of all on the physical value and re retrieving it, and I hope that um, uh, in 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 kindness and in mercy, um, and of course um, we know in the Torah it says that someone who his his wisdom is small he needs a lot a lot of respect. So hopefully. Um, those in the government that don't uh, particularly understand all this, at least they will um, honor the laws and they will understand at least what's going on. Of course, this is very, very important to address, especially in Germany, where there's still lots of anti-Semitism. Of course, um, projects such as Temple Coin, which um, potentially can be um, bringing um, millions of euros, uh, lots of work to Germany because uh, the craftsmanship of Temple Coin is uh, extremely uh, great, just as uh, the German engineering is famous for throughout the world. Um, and uh, of course, this would bring great uh, economic uh, value to the state. And of course, uh, Temple Coin is a proper or a business organization, they pay taxes. So it is in definitely it is in the state's interest for Temple Coin to uh, succeed. Of course, now uh, this would also be an opportunity for for um, the German government to um, show that they are fighting against anti-Semitism because Temple Coin is used primarily to bring gold and silver to fulfill the end prophecies of the in in the Holy Land of Israel. So uh, let's hope for a, a peaceful resolution. And uh, thank you very much for being with us, guys. Thank you.